Parents abandoned me after their divorce. Years later, I inherited $1 million from my grandpa. Suddenly, they're back in my life, demanding money for my half-siblings and dad's debts. I, 21M, have been abandoned by my family when I was around 12. You see, my parents got separated when I was 11. It took me by surprise because it seemed all fine between them. One fine day, they both sat me down and said they were getting divorced. I thought this to be a prank because I had different notions about divorce. I heard from my friends that when their parents got divorced, there was at least a year-long fight and yelling. In my case, it was a silent divorce. They said they both liked someone else. Mom would be moving out with her new boyfriend while dad's mistress would move into our house. They would have joint custody of me. Since both mom and dad would be put up two miles apart, I could shuffle between them weekly. I didn't know what to say. Rather I didn't have any say in that. My family was splitting apart and all I could do was sit and sob. My parents assured me that I would be their topmost priority. They both promised all sorts of things, like getting me the latest video games, taking me on vacations, and getting me anything I wanted. I wish I could make them understand that I didn't want any of those things, I just wanted to live with them in the same house as a family. It was too tough for me to see mom packing her stuff and leaving the house and watching dad's mistress unloading her truck and setting my parents' bedroom as hers. Mom and dad got separated on good terms. Stepmom had twin boys, almost of the same age as mine. They both hated me in the same way I hated them. My mom's boyfriend had a daughter from his previous wife but she was living with her mother. I thought of spending more time at mom's. But soon after she moved out, she got pregnant with her boyfriend's baby and it all got so weird and complicated. I felt like I was not welcome there. Mom's husband got uncomfortable to see me. They would get into PDAs in front of me and I hated it. In my, dad's, house, I felt the same way because my stepmom and her sons hated me. So, I started living more and more with my aunt, father's sister who is also my godmother, she was 10 years older than my father. She was living alone so I occasionally showed up at hers. After a year of shuffling between the three houses, I permanently moved in with my aunt. It took more than three months for my parents to realize that I had moved in with aunt. Mom thought I was at dad's and dad thought I was at mom's. They didn't bother to check on me during this period. They both were so busy with their family that they forgot I existed. My aunt was a real savior. She made me feel loved and wanted. She would take me out for dinners and movies. I used to tag along with her for vacations. During summer, we used to visit grandpa at his farm in the countryside. It was fun living with her. Initially, dad used to send my monthly allowance to aunt but eventually, he started defaulting on that. Sometimes, aunt used to remind them and sometimes she would let it slide. I felt bad for piling up on her so I started working for her and earned my living. She had a plant nursery. I worked there after my school I also helped her in household chores, taking out the trash and even running groceries for her. It was fun living with her. Meanwhile, my parents forgot they have a son. They even forgot my birthdays. Only when aunt reminded them, they would call and say they love me so much. Sometimes, I heard aunt calling and informing them that I was sick but none of them showed up. Even on my school's graduation day, none of them showed up. It was my aunt who was there to cheer me up. When aunt called them to school about their negligence, they would call me and apologize to me. I grew so resentful of them that I stopped answering their calls. Eventually, they stopped calling me. They would now lay the blame on me that I had grown rude and was not answering their calls. I said if you guys want to have a blame game, so be it, I'm not gonna let that affect me. I don't want you guys in my life. After school, I went to uni and moved out from aunt's place. I still visit her every few months. I ensure to show up at her birthdays and holidays because she has also gotten attached to me in all these years. I am in my final year at uni. Three months back, my grandpa, father's side, passed away. It was a terrible moment for both me and my aunt. We both were closest to him. Dad and my other uncles barely visited him. The irony is they all turned up for his funeral and at the lawyer's office to see his will. Unfortunately for them, grandpa gave all his belongings to aunt, his 150-acre farmland, the farmhouse, and $1 million cash. The remaining money he gave off to the charity. That was brutal but if you know his side of the story it would make sense. I'll write about it another thread. Briefly understand that grandpa was ill for a long time and he wanted to meet his sons. Despite aunt requesting her brothers to visit grandpa, none of them showed up. Aunt shifted with him in his final days to take care of him. I had moved out from my uni by then. After getting the possessions of the property, aunt called me home. Her house is what I call home. She told me she would be giving me that $1 million grandpa had left for her. The happiness I felt was beyond words, not because she gave me the money, yeah somewhat, but moreover to think that she cared for me so much. When I was living with her, I used to rant about how I wanted to start my own company, hire employees, and so on. She gave me the money and asked me to use that for my dream venture. I just hugged her and cried. If not for her, my life would have been miserable. It didn't take enough time for this news to reach to my parents. Bam, they suddenly started showering me with their unconditional love. They started calling and checking on me.
I asked them to back off, I don't want you guys back in my life. Last week, dad showed up at my dorm. Of course, he got the address from my aunt. I bet none of them remember which uni I am studying. He said he was so proud that I would be graduating this year and after singing praises of me, he asked me why was I not visiting his home. I asked him when was the last time you called. He stood silent and then said, oh, you're still mad at us for the divorce. Come on move on. We both love you. Your mother also misses you. Let me drive you home. Then we all can have dinner together. I said back off, the only family I have is my aunt. You both abandoned me long before, so quit showing off your fake love. I know why you are here. That one million dollars brought you here right? He remained silent and said he had no ulterior motive except for love. He was here to say sorry and wants me back in his life. He said he heard my graduation was nearing hence he was here to ensure that I invited them, unlike school graduation day when I didn't call either of them. I hated having any conversation with him so I left him midway saying I had a class. The same day I got a voicemail from mom and she said she was expecting an invite for my graduation day. She said she and dad couldn't attend uni so they both always dreamt of me going to uni, hence she was very excited that I was able to cut through it. The thing is I don't want either of them on my big day. I told my aunt about this and she said it was up to me but she suggested I reconcile with my parents. I don't know what to do. I also don't know if they are reconciling for money or if they are genuinely happy for me getting a uni degree. Update 1, hello there, sorry for the late update. Life has been busy. Good news I have graduated from uni. I landed a job as well, thank you. Well, let me start by answering some of the common questions I got in the comment. First was about my aunt. People asked me about her family and how she was able to accommodate me for so many years. I think I wrote in my initial post that my aunt is 10 years older than my dad. When I moved to her place, she was in her late 50s. She was single. Her husband died in an accident when I was tiny, maybe one or two years old. She has a daughter who had moved out in her teens for a medical school. She is a cardiologist now and is settled in UK. So aunt has been living alone. She didn't date any men after her husband's demise. Her daughter and I tried to set her up with a few men but she absolutely denied it. She said she loved her plants and was happy nursing them. Some of you said I was too harsh on my parents, that they have a right to get separated and remarry. You all are right. They do have the freedom to leave slash choose their partner but it is never justified to ignore your children after your new family comes into your life. My parents did the same. They neglected me for their new family. Initially, they said, I would stay one week at dad's and one week at mom's. Though we were following this schedule, sometimes they would be like, uck, it's my time again to have you. Then they would always plan without me. Their dinner plan would always be after I left. They would even talk like this in front of me, oh this week he is here, let's go out next week. How would you feel when your parents behave like this? I think I have spoken about mom that within a few months of her moving in with her boyfriend, she got pregnant. They indulged in PDAs in front of me which was unbearable. They once took me on a two-day trip with them. They made me sit inside the room for the whole two days while they went outside sunbathing. When they were in the room, they would ask me to sit on the balcony outside. Though I was a kid, I knew exactly what was going on inside. I mean I was 11. Besides, I could hear them doing. Gross I know. And that man is not even your father. So, how do you expect me to stick around them? I stopped going to mums after that. Dad was still better than mom. Sometimes, he tried to include me in the plans but his stepsons would throw tantrums at him. Then he would say, okay, skip this one. Maybe next week, father and son could go fishing. That next week would never come because next week I would be at mom's. Soon I realized that my parents had some sort of agreement that whenever they had to get rid of me, they would say, let's do it next week, and then next week I would be the other one's responsibility. Once he was able to tag me along in their family vacation and it was so horrible. First day, we all went out. His wife and her sons kept him busy and I felt so much neglected. Even for the family pictures, they would ask me to take theirs. I was in none of the pictures with them. There were just four pictures of me. In three of them, I was alone and in one it was with dad. I guess now I've given enough context to people who have been here telling me that I was harsh on my parents. Anyways, talking about the current situation, like I said my parents wanted me back in their life. They said it was because they wanted to be a part of my graduation day and it was a proud moment for them. I said I don't want you guys on my big day, where were you guys during my high school graduation? Busy in your new family, that's right. When they persisted further, I said okay but I didn't invite them. I thought they would again reach out to me as the graduation day approached. I even got extra hall tickets for them in case they show up uninvited but they didn't. They forgot about it. And attended the convocation. I strictly asked her not to reveal the dates to my parents. It is almost a month now since my graduation day but none of them called me to check for the dates. So my graduation was just an excuse for them to have me back in their life. Update 2, here's a new update. Almost two and a half months after my graduation day, mom called me and said my half-sister had graduated from primary school and now they have put her in a private elementary school. 
However, they have a shortage of funds and they want me to pitch. I was flabbergasted at her demand. When I asked why, she said she was my sister so I should fund her education. She didn't waste any time in coming to the point. She said, "We know that your aunt has given away her 1 million dollars inheritance money to you. I said, "Of course you do." She continued, "Your sister needs you. This is your time to step up as a big brother." I stopped her right there. "Hello, delusional you. I have never seen that sister you are talking about. Where were you when I needed my mom? When I was sick and cold? You were nowhere." She started sobbing and said, "What can I say if you are still stuck to the past?" I thought you have a huge sum of money. What are you going to do with it? So what's better than your sister getting educated in a private school? I wanted to say a lot but I didn't. I said I have plans for that money and I cannot spare a penny to anyone else. She hung up the phone after that. She didn't even ask me about the graduation day. I was right. Their rekindled love was only for money. I was still processing it when one day I got a call from a bank. They wanted me to pay for my dad's defaulted mortgage. I asked from where did they get my number. They said dad gave it to them. Dad had taken a personal loan and he didn't pay the mortgage for a few months. When they came hunting for him, he requested them to contact me because he had run out of money. To be honest, I panicked initially because I had no idea of how this process works. I got shit scared thinking maybe I was legally obligated to pay his debt since I was his son. Thankfully, I didn't succumb to the pressure and told them I needed to check with my dad first. Instead of talking to him first, I called up my lawyer friend. He wasn't a lawyer though. He was still in his final year of law school, but he knew the felonies quite well. He said no. I was not legally bound. I asked him then how come the bank called me for the money. He said the recovery agent has the leverage to recover the amount from anyone who wants to pay on the loaner's behalf, but I can refuse at any time. I didn't call dad after that. I knew he would plead with me to pay for his mortgage. Knowing it was not on me, I waited for the bank to call me again. They called after a week and asked when I would be giving them the money. Recovery agent has certain assertive tones to scare off people. I was intimidated by it the first time, but this time I charged at them. I said who gave you the right to talk to me like this? Did I default on the mortgage? No right? Then you better watch your tone. And I am not going to pay a penny. You can contact the person who defaulted and not me. They said sorry and hung up. I didn't need to school them, yet I deliberately did so that they could unleash their anger on the original defaulter, my dad. A couple of hours later, I got a call from dad's wife. Sorry I can't call her mom or even stepmom. She was yelling at me. She was asking what did I tell the recovery officers that they got so pissed off. They took dad by his collar and asked him to pay the mortgage or else they would break his bones. I remained quiet and said, "I just told them to chase the original loaner and not me." She screamed at me, "Don't you have any heart for your dad? He is struggling to pay the mortgage and you are looking other way despite having so much money with you." I said, "Yeah, I don't have any heart for him because he didn't have his for me. He has his heart for you and your boys. So why don't you guys chip in? I'm sure he would have taken that money for you people." She hung up after that. That same night dad called me. He was drunk. not angry he was sobbing he said he was sorry for his mistakes that he didn't treat me right in front of his stepsons he said several other things which basically implied how sorry he was and he has realized his mistakes and wants to make things right i said i don't want to talk about my past and i definitely don't want to have them back in my life he said he was remorseful and pleaded that i forgive him i said sorry and remorse doesn't matter to me anymore i have learned to live without them and i would like to have it that way i don't know if i did the right thing by denying him the money I do feel bad that he was chased by the bank officials. I even think if all this is staged just to emotionally blackmail me for money because if he asked me directly, I would have refused it outrightly like I did to mom. What do you guys think? Update 3. Thanks for the valuable comment. Some of you were right in saying that it wouldn't have hurt me to cover for his couple of months of mortgage. Even I thought so, but you know what they don't deserve it. Neither of them. After writing the last update, I felt so remorseful that I was about to call dad and ask how much money he needed. But before that, I got a mail from mom inviting me for dinner. It was written that sorry we couldn't make it to your graduation day, so I want to do this for you. Just 3 3 of us, me, dad and you, like old times. I was not so keen on reminiscing about the old family time. I accepted the invite though. I wanted to end the saga. I showed up. They were saying the same thing that dad was saying the other day, sorry, apologies, remorse, forgiveness, and getting back together as a family. I just played along, nodded, and smiled. I wanted to see where it goes. Out of nowhere, mom goes, "Baby, we were wondering what plans you have for the money." I looked at her and she said, "No, I mean, dad and I could suggest you some good investment advice. You are pretty young to take this decision of your own." I casually said, "Yeah, and is helping me with that, so I'm good. Thanks." Silence prevailed for the next few minutes. She makes a comeback and says, "You know dad has been in trouble because he defaulted on the mortgage." I said, "I know, but dad, why did you take that personal loan for business?" He lowered his head and said for his son's college. Before I could react to that, mom said, "Doesn't matter. 
whatever could be the purpose, the question is dad's in trouble and we have to help him. I was thinking why don't you clear off his mortgage and his stepson would pay you back once they get the job? And the remaining money, you can give it to me. You remember I said, your half-sister needs to be put in a private school. She'll pay you back once she gets older and earns. I replied, how about we silently eat our dinner and call it a day? She lost her mind at my sarcastic reply and yelled that I was still that attention-seeking brat who only cared about himself. I said, yeah that is what I am. I could have lectured them about their behavior but who want to waste time on them? I mean they know I have an education loan to pay off, but still, they want me to give my money for my stepbrother's loan and my half-sister's private education and work hard to pay off my own loan. Wow. I said I am done with you guys. I was right, you guys came back in my life only for money. And you know what, suck it up, you don't get a penny. I left the table leaving my share of the dinner bill on the table. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Wife blindsided me with divorce after 10 years and multiple affairs. Now she wants me back, but I've already moved on with someone new. My wife, 35F, and I, 38M, were married for 10 years, with two elementary-aged kids. The first seven years of the marriage were 10 tenths incredible, at least from my point of view. I could not have asked for a better wife and mother. The last three years have been much tougher, we went to a bunch of counseling trying to get the marriage back on track but could never really get there. I planned countless dates, read and listened to everything on improving a marriage under the sun. It helped, but there was a gap between us I could never seem to close no matter how hard I tried. In the back half of last year she blindsided me with a divorce. I deeply loved her and was devastated. I tried my best to talk her out of it, she waffled a bit, but ultimately insisted on moving forward. I never got a great answer as to why she filed. I wasn't a perfect husband to be clear. I had my faults, I could have done better, but I never cheated, was never abusive, and was a great provider. Certainly these last few years I was 100% and on trying to save the marriage. In any case, a little more than a month after she filed she was already seeing a guy. A month after that she had introduced our kids to him. Then later during the discovery phase of the divorce process she confessed to having multiple affairs starting at about the seven-year mark. One of them lasted at least a year, though she claimed it amounted to only a handful of actual encounters. I had no clue she was even capable of this. The amount of lying she did to keep all this hidden is truly incredible. The day I found out was the worst day of my life, but at least I finally understood why we had such difficulty connecting those last few years. It wasn't for lack of trying on my part. Fast forward 6 months and nearly $100,000 in lawyer bills later and she decides she wants to try and reconcile. Mind you she's still dating the same guy, but she tells me she'll dump him to work on things with me. So what caused her change of heart? I think it might be because she found out I had started dating someone, who's awesome by the way, or possibly because she realized how much her financial life was going to change with my high income exiting the picture. For her part, she claims it was because she saw how great of a dad I was being when I had our kids. I sat down with her and heard her out on everything. I felt this was the least I owed her after a decade of marriage. She took responsibility for her mistakes and gave a heartfelt apology, although she was sure to partially blame my behaviors for driving her to it. No matter how thin you slice it there are two sides to every story, I get that, but I utterly rejected that nonsense of blaming me for her cheating. All that said, I do believe she is truly sorry. Ultimately though, I told her no, and pressed forward with the divorce which was final as of a few weeks ago. For her part she's been relentless trying to get me to give her another chance. Texting almost daily. It's worn heavy on me to see someone I cared so much about filled with so much regret and hurting so badly. I've held firm though, there's just too much damage. I don't think I could ever trust her again. Plus I have this great new gal who's beautiful inside and out and who's been so incredibly supportive and patient. To be clear we met well after I had been served papers. Typing this out highlights the insanity of all this for me. Who in their right mind would try and save a marriage like this? Who in their right mind would even have the guts to ask to try and fix it? I don't love her anymore, but I did love her for so long. And the kids. The co-parenting. I'll never really get away from this woman. It's hard. I guess I'm not sure why I'm posting this. Maybe just to get some validation I'm making the right call? Anyone been through something like this before? Any advice? Comments. 33 say what 33, she said she will dump him but only after you say yes. What part of you are not plan B is she not getting? Op, I've been tempted to tell the other guy how little she thinks of him, but then I'm afraid she'd double down on trying to get back with me. Plus he's way older than her so I get a little satisfaction out of the fact it must be pretty gross. That's probably petty on my end. Cute seaworthiness 366, dude, she is selfish and delusional. Be proud of yourself that you tried the best, have dignity, did right decision and are still civil with her. Salacious underscore pickle, sir, you have been through two of the worst experiences a person can go through. And you have come out of them still alive, upright and whole. Why revisit all that pain and heartache again? You know if she was capable of doing it once and keeping it so well hidden that she is capable of doing it again. And, she's not wanting to reconcile for your sake. 
She wants to reconcile for her own selfish reasons. Walk away. Don't look back. Look forward.